you finally are you, are you convinced about the uh, the the puzzle? Yes, yeah, so convinced about the puzzle. It was a real real teaser. <laughs> Everybody really scolded, teaser. scolded me, you know. They they think that I, I made it up. I didn't made it up, you know. You know. I think, yeah, I think yeah. you know you don't know it. You know? I suppose you're gonna have a few more to tease us as well. Now. I suppose, hey, you're gonna like, you're like, inshallah, eh? inshallah. It's a good one. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Let, let, let's start. Inshallah, surah number two. I haven't got, got my top one, so I'm not gonna show my, but I'm not gonna be on camera. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, two verse number one, one, three. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وقالت اليهود ليست النصارى على شيء وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء وهم يتلون وهم يتلون الكتاب كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون قولهم فالله يحكم بينهم يوم القيامة فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون The Jews said that the Christians follow nothing and the Christians said that the Jews followed nothing, though they both recite the scriptures. I mean, it's like the blind following the blind, isn't it true, right? So the, the Christians were accusing the, the Jews, right, that what they what they follow is, is, not, is, is ridiculous, right? Same thing as the, the Christians were accusing the Jews of the same thing. Now, do you think, do you think that in the Torah, Allah would have mentioned about Isa alayhi salam. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes, it is because it's from the same God anyway, right? At the same time, in the of course in the um, the the angel, not the Bible, yeah, you know, the angel itself, right? Allah would have mentioned about Musa alayhi salam, of course. But both of them are disputing the prophets. Why do you think that they are disputing about the prophets? Some might do it for of arrogance and some uh, of lack of knowledge. Yeah, and, 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 and I think because some of them are basically changing the whole thing, isn't it true, right? I mean, but, it has been distorted. Yeah, exactly. Because if you think about the Torah, when Musa alayhi salam time, that's... It's nearly impossible to think that it's authentic as is many years back. Yes. So it's hard to say. Right. It's because Allah would definitely mention about Isa alayhi salam, and of course definitely about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam in the Torah. And that's for sure. Right? Now, how, how old was Musa alayhi salam? How many years be was he born before Isa alayhi salam? Do you know? Is it five? No, it's more than 500, is it? Remember, I, I gave you that... that the, the list of the, the photos about the prophets and all this. Um, I think he, it was about 1,300 years. Right? Um, so not sure exactly. So so he was born about 1,300 years before Isa alayhi salam. So not sure exactly when um, the Torah was revealed to him. Right? Um, but for sure, right, they, they, they have hidden a lot of things from each other. Okay? And, and therefore, Allah said in this verse, right, um, in, the, in the middle part, like to their word, say the pagans who do not know. Right? Allah will judge them between them on the day of resurrection about what were in that they have been deferring. Right? Now, on, for sure, right, on the day of judgment, Allah would um, judge every nation according to what has been revealed right so would okay so when when allah were to question for example the people of noah salam right has the message been sent what did they, what would they say has your messenger passed you the message do you think they would say yes or no? Brothers? No. They will say no. And Allah will ask the, pro the Prophet, right? Have you passed down the message? And he would say, no, I would say yes. So there's this dispute within the people. 
and the, their own prophet is in subhanallah so nuh salam lived for how many years a thousand 950 years 950 right, 950, right? Yeah. in this 950 years how many were his followers two two or seven i don't know no, no, more, more than that. It's about 80 something, 83, 85, something like that. Oh, right? Similar. The followers. For 950 years, right? Would Allah actually blame Nuh alayhi salam? Why, after 950 years, you only have 80 something followers? Would Allah blame him? But not because the people. Because he, no. he sent the message. Yes. <laughs> And the like you and I, right? We are given a free will, aren't we? Right? To to follow or not to follow, right? So so in the end, okay, the people disputed that the message has been sent. Nuh alayhi salam said, Yes, I've passed the message. So what next comes? Who is who will be the witnesses? Who will be the witnesses? Of Brothers, who? who will testify that Nuh has, has passed a message? Allah. No. Who else? His followers. Sorry? His followers? No, his followers already said no. I mean, I'm talking about the majority of them, right? I'm sure there are mil millions of people, right? All these hundreds of thousands of people, and they said, "No, nobody, nobody, nobody passed the message." So, who will testify? Brothers, it's you and I. You and I will be the witness against all the nations and all the prophets on the day of judgment, right? So, you turn to Surah number two, in verse number one four three, right? Where Allah said, "For kathalika jalna ku ummatna wa sata li ta ku no shuhada ala nasi wa yakuna rasulu alaykum shahida." We made you. That means we made. He made. Allah has made us right as a just nation or the best nation that you may be witnesses over mankind and the messengers. Allah Azza will be witness over you. Right. So, can you imagine? You and I, we will be the witness of all these previous nations. That is why the Day of Judgment is 50,000 years long. Because a lot of things are happening. Witnessing, testifying, right? Very busy. It's not like there's nothing to do. A lot of things happen on the Day of Judgment. 50,000 years is a long time. So we will be the witnesses against all the nations. Why, should, why are we appointed as a witness of all these other nations? Because Allah says we are the best nation and, and the last one and and the nation of Prophet Muhammad. This one? The Quran. The book, isn't it true? We are given the book. No other nations have been given this such a complete book, right? That extends that this knowledge extend until from Adam all the way away until Muhammad right? And this is this is important that we understand this. That we will be the witnesses of all the previous nations. It's quite challenging, isn't it? True to 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 see that all of us will be questioned or will be witnessing against what ha what happened to to those previous nations. So, in a sense, that coming back to Surah number two, verse number one one three, when all this dispute will be happening with the Christians and the Jews, and Allah said He will judge those people on the day of judgment, right? For sure, we will be we will call as a witness, right? To, to say that, you know, um, because both of these Jews and the Christians, right, they, they lost that, um, what do you call it, Islamic monotheism, monotheism right? They, they lost this ability to have Allah as the only one whom we should worship, right, completely, right? And this is something in which you and I, we have to understand that we will be the witnesses of all the previous nations. Okay. Um, so Allah did say, all right, that, um, what do you call it? That we, that, that he will judge between them, between the Christians and the Jews, right? 
stood on the day of resurrection about what wherein they have been deferring. Right? Whatever things that they dis differ, because as I said just now, the, the Christians were disputing, oh, these Jews, they, they, they don't believe in Musa salam for whatever reasons. Right? Do you think that the angel would have, would the, I'm, talking about the, I'm not talking about the Bible, right? Um, but, the, but the angel. Sofian, you are here, right, Sofian? Sofian? Did I hear a voice? Okay, I may be wrong. So in, in the sense that the, the 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 original book, right, as in the angel, would have mentioned about the previous prophets, isn't it true? Right, but is but about Musa Ali Salam and all this, right? And this is something in which they have been completely distorted, right? And that that they completely now disbelieve in Musa at all. I'm talking about the, the Christians, right? Whereas on the Jews is opposite. They completely disbelieve in Isa. And in fact, the children of Israel were the one who were about to kill Isa alayhi salam was intro before Allah um, um, saved him. Okay? Now, um, in Surah number 22, verse number 17, Right in Surah number twenty-two, in verse number seventeen, Allah informed us what is going to happen. Right, twenty-two. In verse number seventeen. In the meaning, verily those who believe, right, and those who are the Jews, the Sabians, and the Christians, and the Majus, Maju, you know. And those who worship others besides Allah, truly Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection. Verily, Allah is over all things a witness. All those who believe in the fire, in other things, everybody will be will have to be accountable to Allah on the day of judgment, right? Um, do you think that Allah has shown everybody guidance? Those who believe that they are Christians, the Jews, the Sabians, the Magians, did Allah show them guidance? Yeah, because Allah yes. says that so, Allah says in the Quran where um, He will show His signs to everyone. Yes, but how about the previous nations? Did Allah show, should give them guidance? All humanity, basically. Yeah. So, but but why, why do you think they, they still disbelieve? Arrogance. Arrogance, um, in terms of uh, in many verses, Allah said, you know, they, they sell the the book, the script the book. for a little price, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, shaitan, right? Mm -hmm. That that's so that was shaitan's main manipulation, isn't it true? Right? We discussed before many times, especially when shaitan appeared in the time of Noah, salam, right? Before he was sent, right? He would never rest until the people of, for example, Noah salam, right, started to worship others. Before all this, there's no such thing as idol worshipping. Yeah, everybody believed in oneness of God, right? right. Uh, uh, to cut a long story short, as you know from the story, right, he came, I think, about three or four generations, very patiently, until eventually they started to worship the idols. Therefore, and Allah could have destroyed all of them, but Allah, with His mercy, He sent another uh, a, a prophet or the, one of the biggest messengers, Nuh salam, to correct them. And yet, they still did not believe. Many do not believe after 950 years. Can you imagine? 950 years, only about 83 or 85 people believed. Right? And so, therefore, it, it is right for Allah as our creator to destroy everybody else. Isn't it true? Right? Even... His son was destroyed, right? Was was drowned in a wave, right? Nuh alayhi salam, right? So, doesn't matter whether your your parents, uh, uh, the a uh, uh, a prophet, right? If you yourself are not submitting to Allah, then you have to be accountable to your own deeds on the day of judgment. Okay. So this is it. Yes, on the day of judgment, we are the last nations, brothers, but we will be judged first. Right, so we will have to 
go through all the different stages of the day of judgment, going to the scales, going to cross the Sirat. We were going to we we were going to be crossing there first. All the other nations will be watching us. And that is something in which, subhanAllah, even when, uh, when, when the Prophet would see you and I crossing the bridge, and it was is a, it's a tremendous sight. Yeah, even the Prophets will say, Oh Allah, save us, save us. Right? So, so this is something in which we, we need to ask Allah to, to keep us firm, right? To keep us in a straight path so that our, our journey in the hereafter, the long journey, yeah, will be... Uh, a successful one. Now, so let's come back to surah number two in verse number one one three, right? One one four now. Wa man masajid Allahi an yudhkar fi hasmuhu wa sa'a fi kharabiha ulaika ma kana lahum an yadkhuluha illa khaifin lahum fi dunya khizyun wa lahum fi al akhirati adhabun azim and who are more unjust than those who forbid that Allah's name be glorified and mentioned much in Allah's mosque and strive for their ruin it was not fitting that such should themselves enter them except in fear for them, there is disgrace in this world and they will have a great torment in the hereafter. Now, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu wanted to go to, to, go to uh, Mecca, right? Wanted to, to go to Mecca from Majin. As you know, he was, he and all the companions, they were asked to leave Mecca, right? They were asked, they were forced to migrate to uh, Medina, right? And then after that, on the way back, I think on uh, um, about nine or year, nine years later, right? They wanted to go, and then they were prevented from uh, from performing the, uh, the the Umrah, right? Um, to enter Mecca again, right? They signed a treaty called Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Are you familiar with Treaty of Hudaybiyah? Anybody? Are you familiar with this? Called the Treaty called Hudaybiyah, right? In which there was this treaty in which on the surface, right, the Sahaba was so much disagreeable to it, right? Um, the treaty is like this, right? You cannot enter Mecca this year. You can because everybody can imagine was traveling, and you know, in those days there's no transport, they were walking or in on the camels and the animals and all this, right? From Mecca, it's quite a long distance. Even now, if you travel from Mecca to Medina. From so the Medina to Mecca is about if you take a car is about perhaps about three about four hours if you take a bus is about six or seven hours, right? So to travel on a, a camel is or uh, is even more is even longer, isn't it true? So after all this trip, all this uh, travel, right? They hold on, give me one minute. Okay. Sorry. Um, so after all this travel, right? There were the 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 Quraysh said no, you cannot enter, right? But you can you can go next year, and you go for the next ten years freely. That means you do need to worry that we're going to be attacked. We it's going to be peaceful. However, there are certain conditions attached to it, right? The conditions, for example, include if anybody from Anybody who, who from the Muslims in Medina, if they wanted to revert or to convert back, right, to become Quraysh, right, or in the sense that they, they want to disbelieve in Islam and, and they want to return to Mecca, you must immediately set them free. However, those people in Mecca, right, who wanted to be a Muslim, they cannot go to Medina. So there's a lot of unfairness, injustice, right? And they were prevented actually from um, returning uh, to, to perform their, their, their Umrah on that, on that year, right? But Muhammad Sallallahu with the wisdom from Allah, of course, right? That he signed this treaty. Why? Because the following year and for the next 10 years, everybody would be able to worship Allah freely. 
right? So despite a lot of shortcomings, I mean, on the surface, that the, the treaty wasn't wasn't good. You should Google this quite an interesting called Treaty of Hudaybia, right? Um, and then it was signed, right? And um, the next year they were able to 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 enter, right? So the Quraysh was actually trying to prevent the Muslims from going to back to Mecca, right? And um, to glorify Allah. Okay. Now, if you look in Surah number um, twenty, surah, sorry, Surah number eight, verse number thirty-four, right? You know now if if you have been to Mecca, Medina, um, Khalifa, you are here, right? Is that you? I saw. His name. Yes, yes, guys. I'm I'm out at the moment, so I'm not sure how well you can hear me. But yes, I can hear you. Alhamdulillah. You're born. Khalifa is born. Was born in Saudi Arabia, right? Yes, that's right. I was born in Riyadh. Alhamdulillah. You know, it's such an honorable place to to be born in, right? And for those who have been there, you would know that this is the only place where. When you come across near this Masjid al Haram, right, the, both Mecca and Medina, you will see a sign, right? Muslims go straight ahead, non Muslims, you have to U turn, right? You're not allowed to enter because of these verses that we are going to recite, inshallah, right? That, that Allah has forbidden the, um, those who are non Muslims, yeah, to, or those uh, who are impure, right, to enter these holy places, right? So look in Surah number 8 verse, verse number 34. And this is quite interesting. Allah described who are the guardians of the uh, these holy places, right? 2 verse number, uh, sorry, Surah number 8 verse number 34, right? 8.34 Okay, in the meaning, right? And why should not Allah punish them while they hinder men from Masjid al-Haram? So we, we, we were talked about, you know, that, that verse in Al-Baqarah, right? That these people, the Quraysh, used to hinder the Muslims yeah, from worshipping in Masjid al-Haram, right? And Allah said, of course, all will will punish them, right? And they are not his guardians. So Allah literally said, right, these idol worshippers, right, the Quraysh, should no longer be the guardians of the Masjid al-Haram, right? None can be the guardians except what? Al-Muttaqun, but most of them do not know. And listen to this, right? Right, and I repeat in Arabic, right? Um, I'm not judging, of course. I'm just I'm just discussing with the bro you brothers, right? In awliya'uhu illa al-Muttaqun, walakinna akhtarahum la ya'lamun, right? So none can be the guardians except Al Muttaqun. So none can no, no the, the custodians of the um, the holy places. Allah has laid down the ground rule. You will only be the one to guard have the guardianship if you have taqwa to Allah. Twenty twenty today. Do you think who is the guardianship? Who is the gu guarding the Masjid Haram now? The king. Saudi Arabians, the Saudi king is neutral. Yeah. Right? Do you think they, they fit this criteria? No, not the prince. <laughs> no. Yeah, but whatever it is, right? The king and the prince comes in the same gang, is neutral, right? Yeah. They, they, they were the one who said, oh, this year you cannot go to Hajj, right? Because of COVID 19, right? They, they set up all these rules regarding this. So, so previously, when the, um, I'm not making this political, right? And this is a fact, right? Before the fall of the um, Ottoman Empire, right? Who was the guardianship of this um, the the Masjid Al Haram? Uh, oh, I forgot. The, the Turks, isn't it true? Yeah. The Turks, right? And somehow or other, with the help of the British and the Saud family and all this, they topple uh, the Khilafah's finish. Well, I mean, 
I'm not here to discuss about the do what whatever things that they they have done, but in a sense that the Turks were in charge, and then now the Saudis are in charge, and look at the state of the whole country now, right? In terms of how different it has developed, in terms of how God fearing they are, right? You can see concerts being held, right? Um, you can see all these um. Matches being held, I think a lot of things and the clubs and all these shisha shops are uh, flourishing now and all this, right? They can only flourish with the permission of the ruler, isn't it true? Do you agree? So on, on that basis, when Allah stated in Surah number 8, verse number 34, Right, none can be the uh, guardianship except the al mutaqud but most of them do not know. Do they meet this criteria? No, for sure. Right, when you have imprisoned all the scholars and all this, right, um, we cannot speak out and all this, then for sure, right, um, it, it contradicts what Allah's. I'm, I'm just trying to make you think. Right, the reality of 2020. What what happened? Okay, now if you look in Surah number nine, verse number seventeen to eighteen. Okay, nine seventeen to eighteen. Right, Allah informed us. Right, it is not for the mushrikeen to maintain the mosque of Allah, so the Quraysh who are idol worshippers must not be able. To, must not be allowed, sorry, to maintain the mosque, right? Um, Allah, uh, uh, to, to pray and to worship and all this, etc., etc., yeah? while they witness against their own selves of disbelief, the works of such are in vain and in fire they shall abide, right? Maintaining the house of Allah in terms of the Kaaba, Masjid al Haram, in Medina, and all this, right? It's not just about to give money and finance. It's more than that. Okay? In, in the verse number 18, the mosque of Allah, and look, listen to this, right? Shall be maintained only by those who believe in Allah and the last day, performs a salah and gives zakat. And fear none but Allah. It is they who are the true guide, who are on the true guidance. Right? So they must be able to form this to be able to maintain Masjid al-Haram and to be able to maintain Medina. On the basis of 2020, you see the uh, westernization of the whole country. Um, it, it doesn't seem that they fit this criteria. That's all, all I'm trying to say. Right? So they it is not just about oh um, we are financing the you know the pilgrims right it's about infrastructure it's not just about that you yourself you have to have this ability to really obey allah and fear allah if you don't fear allah you shouldn't be maintaining this whole place because it defeats the purpose of what allah is in the quran the quran is meant for you and i to follow not just to read and just overlook what we what we have read is neutral. Okay. Now, so so this is this is quite important, yeah, for all of us to understand who that Allah has has clearly stated, right? But who should be the guardianship of this? And, and as I said before, right, those who have been to Mecca and Medina, you would know, right? Alhamdulillah, at least for today, as far, as far as we know, that only Muslims can enter the place, right? Because Allah has promised. Um, or uh, has ordered these people that people who are impure, meaning the disbelievers, are not allowed to enter this place, rightly so, right? Because this is not, can you imagine, brothers, if you allow the tourists to enter this place, what do they do, right? They set up these tourist things with the, the buses, load comes, not to worship Allah, but to, you know, go there, take pictures, and then do photos, selfies, have all these vloggers, vloggers, music video. A lot of things. I mean, I'm sure it, it has happened now to a certain extent, right? But if you invite or you are allowed to invite all these non-Muslims, and I hope, right? I truly hope that the Saudi government will stick on to this. 
clearly stated in the Quran, right? Those who are non-Muslims are not allowed are not allowed to enter the place, right? I'm sure a few slipped in, right? Just because they may be paid a lot of money and all this, it is it is difficult, especially in Hajj, right? If you haven't been there before, right? Um, Every few uh, kilometers you travel, you'll be stopped by the police. They will check your passports, whether we are Muslims or not. And it's quite tight now at this moment, right? Um, that is why, alhamdulillah, it's, it's still, I mean, sorry, the last time I went there was 2003, 2006. Not sure how much it has changed. I'm sure it's similar, inshallah, right? So this is something in which you and I, we just make dua to Allah that Allah will maintain and preserve this place, right? As it has been. Uh, discussed before in the Quran. Okay, now so let's turn back to Surah number two in verse number um, one one five. Walillahi al alim. And to Allah belongs the east and the west. So who, wherever you turn yourselves. There is a face of Allah. Surely Allah is all sufficient for his creatures' needs, all knowing. <coughs> Where was the Qibla before uh, the Makkah? Pardon? Sorry? Where was the Qibla? Where, where would people face to pray? Before Masjid al In Palestine, isn't it true? Right? In Jerusalem, right? Um, I think it was about maybe in, in this, this verse was revealed in Medina, perhaps I might may be wrong, but 10 months or um, 10 to 18 months after the migration to Medina, then the verse was revealed to change the direction of uh, 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 we face to Mecca now, right? So in, in the early days, the Jews were so happy, right? Why? Because the Jews also, as you know, right, they take the uh, Jerusalem, Masjid Al Aqsa, as the, the the main focus of prayer. There is, I don't know whether you have been there before, right? There is this, the Wailing Wall, right? I, I've been there before, Alhamdulillah. Um, then and there's a lot of things that they invented about this place, right? Um, so when it happened that, so the Jews were happy that the Muslims in the early days they were turning their faces to. Battle Maqdis, they call it, right? All the Masjid, uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa, right? In order to pray, right? And we're going to go through again in later verses in Al-Baqarah itself, how Allah revealed a verse to turn the faces to Masjid Al-Haram, right? Um, and Allah did say in that verse, right? It, it was difficult for people to, to turn the directions because their heart was always with Masjid Al-Aqsa. To turn to Masjid Al-Haram was quite difficult, right? It happened... I think in on in the Asar prayer, right? Muhammad was was leading the prayer, and the revelation came, um, and he because let's say he let's say he was the Imam here, right, facing this way, right? Masjid Haram is right at the opposite side, so he he went round and he came to the other side, and he faced the other side because this Masjid Haram is the other side, and everybody turned. Right? Allah did say in that verse, it was very difficult for people, but. Whether it's east or whether it is west, in a sense, right? Allah is still there, right? That's what that was what the verse meant. So, in a sense, that if you and I are traveling, right, um, we do not know the direction of Qibla. Should we still be praying? Yes or no? If we do not know, we yes. have no compass, right? Yes, yes, we should. Isn't it true? Right? Or we must still pray, right? That is why it is allowed for you and I to pray when we are on a plane, right? When we are on a train, when we got no control of the vehicle, and so we can pray when we are sitting down, even though. So whether you face here or there, we are still facing Allah in a sense, right? Allah will still listen to what we have to say in our salah, right? So we shouldn't stop just because we don't know the direction of Qibla, right? So that's, that's why, as I said, um, when Allah removed the, uh, uh, changed the direction of the Qibla to Masjid al Haram, right? Some people find it quite difficult to accept. But, and Allah did say, whether well, East and West, you're still facing Allah, right? 
It's just that because you're, we are following the command of the Quran, right? To turn to Masjid al-Haram to pray. That means to turn in the prayer of Kaaba. It's a form of unity, isn't it true? A lot of people, if, if, if you look at the people will still criticize Islam no matter what, isn't it true? There are a lot of critic, people, critical people will think, oh, this black stone is like a, an idol, isn't it? Everybody is worshipping this idol, this black idol here, isn't it true? Well, this, well, I can't blame them because some of the Muslims make it, the way they worship Allah in that place is so exaggerated, you know? Um, there's so much innovations there, right? They will cling on, you know, Spider-Man, right? They cling on to the Kaaba like that, and then they will and they cry and cry and cry. It, it's as if, right? It's, it's idol worshipping, right? Um, the way they treat the Kaaba, of course, it's so much reverence and all this. It is, it is a form of unity. That is the main thing that we need to understand, right? That everybody... When we worship, we face the Darshan Kaaba to unify the Muslims, whether you are in Mecca, whether you are in America, whether you are in Netherlands, whether you are in China, whether you are in New Zealand, everybody face the same directions, right? So it's all about unity. And secondly, what is the first mosque that was built in the world? Anybody? What is the first mosque that was built? It is in Mecca itself, right? That is the very first mosque that was built. Allah used the word Bakka, right, in the Quran, right? The first mosque that was built is in Mecca, right? In fact, all the prophets have trodden the same path around this place, right? This is not a coincidence that most of the prophets are revolving around these areas, right, in order to understand the importance of, of Mecca itself, okay? So, so this is something to understand, right, that... Wherever you are, right, whether east, facing east or facing west, right, and especially when you do not know which direction of the Qibla and all this, right, you just need to pray because Allah is always looking at us and Allah is always will be answering to our dua, inshallah. Okay? Now let's look in, in surah, in verse number 116. وقالوا اتخذ الله ولدا سبحانه بل له ما في السماوات والارض كل له قانتون and they say Allah has begotten a son glorified is he nay to him belongs all that is in the heavens and on the earth and all surrender with obedience to him right they means everyone right the Jews the Christians and the pagans, right, all, I mean, misunderstood this concept that Allah has a son, right? How come it became so bad, brothers, that the early scriptures did not say this at all, right? But somehow or other, and I'm thinking about original scriptures, right, Injil, Torah, and all this, right? How come it turned so bad that suddenly people think that Allah has a son? Right? This this is this is the most grievous sin ever, right? If you look in Surah number 19, if I'm not mistaken, right? And I think it's verse number 88. Right? 19 in verse number 88. Sorry, not 19. 9, you want me a second, right? In, in Surah number 9. 9, sorry, in verse number 88. Okay. Sorry, 18, sorry. Not, sorry, I'm missing. 19, 88 to 95, right? 88 to 95, Surah number 19, sorry, right? And they say the most gracious has begotten a son or offspring. Right? Is the son of Allah. Right? They say the most gracious, right? That has begotten a son. Right? Is the son of Allah. And the Christians say that he has begotten a son. And they, the pagans Arabs, say that he has begotten a daughter. So everybody, somehow or other, I mean, think that Allah is like you and I. Right? Are able to have children and all this. Right? 
89 and you have what you have brought so what they say is a terrible thing whereby the heavens are almost torn and the earth is split asunder and the mountains fall in ruin that they describe a son to the most gracious right so what they say about allah having a son is so horrible it's so uh, disgusting right that Allah described them that the heavens, the, the skies are almost torn, right? The earth it, it, it is going to have an earthquake, right? And the mountains fall in ruins. It's so despicable what they say that Allah is the sun, right? In verse number 91, right? That they ascribe a son to the most gracious, right? It is not suitable, right? That he should beget a son. Right? There is none in the heavens and the earth but comes to the most gracious as a slave. Right? So this is this that that is why, brothers, that the, the most grievous sin in Islam is shirk. Right? Ascribing another partner with Allah. That is why for those of us who are who are reciting the uh, Surah Al Kaf on Friday, right? What did Allah say in the last bit, right? In the um, last part of Surah Al Kaf, in Surah number 18, verse 110. Right? Those, for those who are hoping for the meeting with His Lord, first of all, let Him work righteousness, right? Do good righteous deeds and not ascribe any partner in association, yeah? along with his Lord. So this is very important. If you want to meet Allah, if you hope to meet Allah, right, then we must do these two things, right? Do good righteous deeds and do not commit shirk, right? This is the most horrible thing, right, that these people have ever thought of, of ascribing things with Allah, right? So this this, this clearly shows that, um, Shaitan, right, is working his their way through the people, right? And if we know only, right, about you and I know, right? That's why the what one of the most important surah in the Quran is Surah Al Ikhlas, wasn't it true? How was this surah revealed? Anybody? Do you know how Surah Al Ikhlas was revealed? Okay, that first of all, is it because... yes, continue. Ikhlas, yeah. Is it because yeah. of the idols worshipping uh, around the Mac, uh, the Kaaba, sorry? Yes. What did they say? This is what I know. Uh, the, they used to worship um, the the idols. So yes, um, that's why this surah came. Yeah. So so in a sense that they were so proud of the each idol has a name, right? Lad, Uzza, right? And they were all proud of the idols. Oh, my Lord is Lad, my Lord is Uzza, right? They were um, praising their idols, right? And then suddenly they turned to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu right? So Muhammad, tell us, who is your Lord, right? And Allah revealed this. In four short verses, he's able to explain to you and I, yeah, about who Allah is, right? Qul, say, Wallahu, he is Allah, Ahad, one and only, right? No son, no wife, nothing, right? One and only, Allahu Samad, he is the, um, the one who, um, ever he's the one who provides you and I with things, right? He he need not be maintained, right? And this is a Samad, right? Can you imagine? All these um, idols, right? They, the people have to repair them. They have to paint them. They have to maintain them. Things get cracked and all this. But Allah doesn't all this, right? But Allah maintain us, yeah. Um, and he, he's our master, right? Self, um, he's the one who who who's who is the master who providing us with provide us with anything, right? But he doesn't need to be maintained. Right, is uh, what is Asamad? Is not the meaning of Asamad is yeah, the, he is the eternal one, right? And then Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad, he wasn't born, neither can he give birth. 
right? Walam yakullahu kufuan ahad. There's none equivalent to him. So this is so important, this verse, this surah, whole surah, four verses, right? You know, remember from the hadith, right? It's equivalent to, equivalent to one third of the Quran. It's about tawheed, about purity, right? That Muhammad Sallallahu was asking the Sahaba. So who among you have recited it in one night? Yeah. So who did recite one third of the Quran last night? And the people were so surprised, right? Oh, message of Allah. How can we finish one third of the Quran in one night? And Muhammad Sallallahu said, well, recite um, Al-Ikhlas. It is equivalent to one third of the Quran, right? Now, but it's a big but, of course, brothers, right? That we have to feel in the heart what we recite, isn't it true? Um, about the oneness of Allah. And this is what, I mean, I've always repeatedly saying, especially to myself, inshallah, right? That if we know what is Tawheed, if we know this whole concept of Tawheed, Insha'Allah, the whole deen we are able to follow in the best of men is when we have no basic concept of Tawheed, then when then everything will come in a mess, right? So, for example, when COVID nineteen, right? A lot of people losing jobs, people are getting desperate for money, right? And then whatever jobs come along the way, you just take it. Just take it. You just take it. It doesn't matter. I have to feed my family. What is the mistake that they made? This phrase, I have to feed my family. I have no choice. What is the mistake? Anybody? It is not you and I who feed the family. It is Allah, isn't it true? Right? This is when the Tawheed comes in that He is the Ar Razaq. He is the one who provides. He is our Rab. He maintains, He sustains. Right? So when we know this, then we need to be patient and make sure that the job that we get is completely allowed by Him, isn't it true? Right? Because people get so desperate. Whatever jobs that come in, you just take it. Even though the job means that you cannot perform the prayer on time always, right? Um, you are dealing with riba, interest, you are dealing with alcohol, you are dealing with a non-halal meat, you still take it. Because why? Because you have to feed my fa your family and because I have to do it, because there's no choice. Then you have completely misunderstood about al-ikhlas in it, right? He's the one, he's his as samad He's the one who is a self-sufficient master, right? He's the one who will provide you and I with things, right? He's the one who will be the one who, um, what do you call it? Give us whatever things that we want. But of course, we need to, we need to put in effort. And this is where we need to have patience, inshallah, right? If you don't have patience, and if you are, this is when shaitan comes in, right? He will, um, you know, um, whisper into your ears, oh, you have to do this. You have not been working for three months, four months. Look at your bank account. There's nothing in your bank account. How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? How are you going to explain to your family and all this, right? Always remember, brothers, right, that eventually we have to be answerable to Allah right yes we have the free will to do whatever we want in this world we can take any employment that we want right um, but we have to be accountable like alhamdulillah like brother Ibrahim was um, informing me about well should I take this job right because the company may be involved in alcohol and in some form of cannabis production but I'm not involved in that yeah but subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, he was quite conscious about, about this issue, right? Imagine if he were to take this job in this company, right? Where is the source of money comes from? It's from the sale of alcohol and from the sale of cannabis, isn't it true? If the sale is haram, if your income is haram, what's going to happen to, 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 to you, brothers? 
if your source of income is haram, what is going to happen to, what is the consequence? The dua is not, may not be answered, right? And then it lead to many, many things, right? Especially when we deal with alcohol, right? Then your dua may not be answered for 40 days, right? So it's, it's a huge repercussions. The person getting the job may not feel it in, the, in, in this world, of course, but in the hereafter, for sure, right? Accountability has to be done in the hereafter. Of course, Allah is fair, isn't it? So there was these two families who were patiently asking Allah for help, right? Did not take any jobs relating to these haram things, right? Asking for Allah to help them patiently. And there were this group of people earning thousands of pounds, right? Doesn't matter halal or haram, just take this job. Who is Allah going to show mercy on their judgment? Right? And all these brothers, we have to think carefully yeah, about the consequence of our actions. Right? Because if we are not careful, then on the day of judgment, you will you will be shocked by the outcome of Allah's decision. Right? And Allah is so merciful. That even, right, remember, remember in, the, in one hadith that Allah said that, well, um, the, my mercy is divided into 100 parts. One part is in this world and 99 parts in the hereafter. He said in another hadith, yeah, my mercy is even more than my anger, my wrath, right? So all this points out to um, Allah's mercy and he would even show mercy to this person who killed 100 men wasn't it true that, th that this person would be entering Jannah right so that means eventually if you and I after all many many chances Allah given us in this world right and if you and I were to be disgraced in the hereafter and we enter hellfire we deserve it isn't it true all right so something which, which you and I, we have to reflect, right? That, yes, we are given the free will in this world to do many things that we want, but always remember the consequence. And if you are doubtful of any matter, what is the rule of thumb? Then don't do it, right? This is the rule of thumb of, of doubtful matters. We're gonna, one day we're going to talk about this, about doubtful matters, right? Should we do this? Should we do it? And I'm, I'm so doubtful about this. If you are doubtful, then don't do it. That is rule of thumb. Because if you do it, it doesn't matter whether you know or you do not know. If you fall into sin, you will be sinful. You will be accountable on the day of judgment, right? On the day of judgment, there's no such thing as, oh Allah, I do not know, I cannot do this. Right? So do be careful with um, our actions, brothers, because there will be severe consequences on the hereafter if you are not careful and we, if we are neglectful, right, of the accountability in the hereafter. Okay, let's finish off the, 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 the rest of the two, three verses, inshallah. Surah number two, in verse number 117. Right? Badi'u samawati wal ardi wa idha qada amran fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun. The originator of the heavens and the earth, when he decrees a matter, so he only says it to it be and it is. Right, so this is in relation to one one six of uh, again, of course, right? In the sense that, well, Allah is too great to have a son or a daughter, is what they claim, right? He was he's he originates, he creates all these heavens and the earth, right? He created them first before he created you and I, right? And then Allah said, when he decreed a matter, it's so simple, right? You, you need only to say kun faya kun be and it will be right it's nothing difficult for allah to to create right as allah had um allowed musa salam to cross the red sea right as allah created adam salam out of the earth out of nothing in a sense and from the earth right he created adam salam as allah created isa salam from a mother right allah can do anything Okay, now one one eight. 
وقال الذين لا يعلمون لولا يكلمنا الله أو تأتينا آية كذلك قال الذين من قبلهم مثل قولهم تشابهت قلوبهم قد بينا الآيات لقوم يوقنون And those who have no knowledge say why does not Allah speak to us or why does not a sign come to us So said the people before them words of seemly import Their hearts are like we have indeed made plain the signs of people who believe with certainty Now as Allah said history always repeats itself right Previous people will always say, where's, Allah? where's the sign of Allah? If I only believe when we see this sign, right? Why, why, don't, why don't, doesn't Allah speak to us directly if he wants us to obey him, right? Now, brothers, let, let, let's be realistic, right? You and I know this, right? Even if Allah were to speak to us directly for once, for example, right? Would we forget what we promised Allah? Yes. Has Allah spoken to us directly before? Brothers? Has Allah spoken to us directly before? Yes. Right? When Allah swept the back of Adam a.s. Right? And all of us had appeared in front of Allah. You and I, whether we want to admit it or not, it is in the Quran. And Allah said in the Quran, it did happen. Right? In surah number 7, verse number 172, Allah did speak to you and I. Yeah, In 7, verse number 172, right? Allah informed us. Right? And remember when your Lord brought forth from the children of Adam, from their loins, their, their seed, Right, um, and made them testify as to themselves. Am I not your Lord? Allah spoke to you and I. Right? Am I not your Lord? And we did say, Yes, Allah. Yes, you are our Lord. Right? And Allah said, Lest you should see on the day of resurrection, we will be, we will, we will have been made. Unaware of this, right? Allah has spoken to you and I, right? When we, and when He swept the back of, of Adam, salam, we have appeared in front of Allah, we have testified, we have made this uh, covenant to Allah. Yes, you are our Rob, we will remember this. But look at what's happening now to 2020, right? Many people claim that they're Muslims, but many people are committing acts of shirk, isn't it true? When Allah said, am I not your Rob? Rob means what? Rob means the maintainer, the sustainer, the one who provides, the one who protects, the one who guides, right? The sovereign one. It is our Rob, the one who provides you and I with this uh, blue, clear sky, beautiful day. Today, I'm sweating in my room, right? I can't open the window because of noise from outside, right? And all this is from our Rob who provides us with everything in the fridge when you open. Alhamdulillah, for you and I at least, we have something, right, in our fridge, isn't it true, right? It's all from our rock, right, it provides us with water to drink, with food to eat, right? It's all from our rock, right? And and we have to remember this, right? Um, so, so we have met Allah before, and we cannot remember. Right? How can a baby just grow up just like that? Or, or let's say a male and female fluid mix. How can just from like that it becomes a clot, it becomes a, 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 a mess, right? And then it grew to be a baby with eyes, with ears, in the mother's womb. It, there must be our Rob who did this, isn't it true? Right? And this is something we have to acknowledge this. Okay, because it is quite audacious or is quite uh, arrogant for people to say, right? Unless God speak to me, then I believe. Because this what was how um, the the children of Israel, right? We we discussed it for in in, in in the earlier part in Al Baqarah, right? When they saw Musa alayhi salam with this Torah with this tablet. Right, came down from the mountain after 40 days. 
well, of course, they worship I, they worship the calf and all these kind of things, right? And then they say, we shall, we only believe in you, Musa, right? When when we see Allah, and Subhanallah, right? What did Allah do? Allah make all of them die, isn't it true? They were all dead, right? With thunderbolt, the only thing why or the only reason why they were res, re, uh, made to alive again because Musa and was pleading with them, right? Musa was saying, Oh Allah, how can I explain to the people in the village that these are the best people, right? You have killed the best people. How can I explain to them? How can your message would be passed to the, the, to the people of, of, of your greatness? Yeah. So, and Allah listened to Musa and Of course, Allah has his own uh, pre notion that he's going to make them alive again. And Allah put them all to life again, right? In the time of Isa alayhi salam, right? Those people say, oh, we will not believe unless we see this whole table full of uh, uh, food comes down from, from the sky. Wasn't it? And, and did Allah do uh, show them the food? Yes, of course. This whole food came down. And did they believe? Most of them, they still don't believe after that. Then so they will be at the lowest level of hellfire in the hereafter. Right? And we talked before, I think was it last week, right? About these uh, people of the... Um, um, Thamud, right? Who said, oh, we would only believe, right? If your Lord showed to me talking to the prophet, which prophet of Thamud? Prophet? Salih alayhi salam, right? Talk to Salih alayhi salam. Oh, Salih, we only believe when your Lord will produce this 10-month uh, red she-camel, 10-month pregnant red she-camel and must come from this rock. What's so difficult to Allah? For Allah, it's so easy. Allah created the heavens and the earth, uh, the universe, you and me from nothing and all this. This thing coming out from this uh, stone is nothing to Allah. He just say, kun faya kun, be and it is. Right? And he did all that. This The rock parted and the camel came out. Did they believe? No. They even, they even killed the camel. Wasn't it true? Right? And this is how humans are. Yeah. So... Coming back to 2020, you and I, right? We always want to see signs. Oh, if we see signs of Allah, then we will believe more, right? But subhanAllah, right? I think it will be tomorrow's topic, right? Pondering about Allah's signs, right? And the fact that the sky is perfect, right? We are able to breathe. I have eyes. I have ears. The trees, yeah, now, now in green, not too long ago, a few months ago, it, it was all as if they are dead in the winter, right? Aren't all these signs of Allah that we have to reflect? We have to ponder about these signs, okay? And that, therefore, brothers, right? Allah did say, right? All these people, their hearts are like they have indeed. Because Allah said, we have indeed made all these signs for you and I to ponder, Right? I know in London it's difficult to ponder because we are in a city, right? Difficult to ponder, but we have to force ourselves when you see the sun um, uh, rising, when you see the sun setting, right? When you see the stars in the sky, what is in, what is in your mind? It's not, it cannot just be about, oh, so beautiful, I shall take selfie of the sunrise. I shall take selfie of the sunset, right? It cannot be just like that. It must boil down to you and I appreciating or pondering of all those creations. What happened if the whole earth, right, there is no night, it's only day, which, which some of us think that it is helpful for, for our work, but it's not. If there's no night, what happened, right? It's quite lethargic in summer, isn't it, to what, what we are feeling now, right? That's why some of us are finding it quite difficult to wake up in Fajr because you cannot sleep, so she's so hot now, right? What happens if the opposite is all mostly night and no day? Right? People become so depressed, like in uh, um, Iceland, in northern part of Norway, right? The suicidal rate is quite a lot. Is it true for those non-Muslims? Because they feel very depressed, right? So something in which you and I, we have to understand everything that Allah created is a sign for you and I to ponder, to, to, to glorify Allah and, and to thank Allah, right? That the whole universe, the whole world, is perfect, right? If it's not perfect, there will be a lot of things you and I know in the universe itself, right? A lot of meteors, a lot of particles and all this, they can knock each other very fast, very easily, right? And But Allah, 
he gave us or the universe all this balance right with this balance right and with the rotation or the the, the the earth goes around the sun right and it revolves around the sun and then the moon mars here and all this kind of sun is so perfect even the earth is rotating as it goes around the sun everything is in perfect balance isn't it true Right, and that's how we need to understand that Allah even that doesn't need to sleep. Right, in Ayatul Kursi, la la ta'khuru sinatu wala nau. He doesn't slumber, neither does he sleep. It's wrong for the Christian to say Allah created the earth in six days and then he rested. It's a, it's a, it's a blatant shirk, isn't it true? Right, because didn't Allah say in, uh, in the, just now we recited in uh, Al Ikhlas, wala mnya kullahu kufun. Uh, there's no equivalent to him. You and I, I can guarantee you, if we don't sleep, yeah, we we is madness right it's one of the easy ways to torture people right by sleep deprivation right if you don't sleep and if in those days people do this right um they, they, they deprive people from sleeping then you will be mad you will go crazy and you will say anything that you know in order to get you released and get get your sleep right but allah doesn't need all this okay now um 119 last one right إن أرسلنا كبالحق بشرا ونذرا ولا تسأل عن أصحاب الجحيم. Verily we have sent you with the truth, a bringer of glad tidings, and a warner. Right, and you will not be asked about the dwellers of the blazing fire. Right, what did Allah send you and I? Islam, right? This is the truth. What did Allah send to Musa alayhi salam? Islam. What did Allah send to Isa alayhi salam? Islam. Is it true? Right? That is why for, for me, I mean, because Islam has been so misconstrued and so much lies have made about Islam that people think that Islam is about Arabs and terrorism and all this. It's not completely not true. And it's about cutting hands and the Shari Allah is about cutting hands and chopping heads and all this. It's completely untrue, right? That is how for me when I were to give a marriage, a nikah khutbah, right? Depends who the audience is. If I were to um, give in front of a lot of Christians, the parents are uh, not a new Muslim and all this, right? And therefore the families were all Christians or other peoples, I would not use the word Islam at all. Right, I just use the word complete submission to God. I would not even use the word Allah because people think Allah is only deal, dealing with Muslims. Muslims means Arabs. Arabs, subhanAllah, how many percent of Muslims are in Saudi Arabia or in the Middle East? Not many. Indonesia has about the most populous uh, country in the world, isn't it? In Indonesia, right? So I always use a general term, right? Um, as I said, I won't even use the word Islam. I just say complete submission to God. So that people will understand this, right? So the level of language that I use in terms of the, the degree, it all depends on who the audience is. And this is important for you and I to try and do to give da'wah to the people, right? So Allah said that he has brought you and I the truth, which is Islam, right? And... It is a bringer of glad tidings. If we were to do good, we were to obey Allah, submit to Allah, then inshallah, you and I will give, be given glad tidings of Jannah. And a warner, because if we don't do this, if we don't submit, and when I say submit, it must be complete submission. It's not about half-half submission. Complete submission. If you don't do this, then we will see the results in the hereafter. And deservedly so. As I said just now, if any one of us would be disgraced by Allah in the hereafter by entering hellfire to be purified first to, on a transit route to Jannah itself, right? That clearly shows that we deserve to be in that state and that, um, what do you call it? Um, that is such a disgrace, right? D despite Allah's bountiful of mercy, we are there. Of course, brothers, we have to have this fear and hope, not too overconfident. Oh, of course, I'm praying, I'm fasting Mondays and Thursdays, I'm praying Tahajud, I'm helping the poor. Of course, I'm being Jannah. There's no such thing, right? We have a lot of things to analyze between ourselves, right? In terms of our deeds, as I said before, the more knowledge we have, the more we are scrutinizing our, our deeds. Isn't it true? 
the more and more knowledge we have, the more we are aware that there's still many more things that we haven't done. It's all those people without knowledge are the one who think, oh, don't worry, Allah is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Yeah, he's so merciful. We will be entering Jannah. Right? Of course, we hope so, inshallah. Right? But we just need to really have a mixture of hope and fear. Okay? And the last part is, is the best. We will not be us about the people in the blazing fire. After we did the da'wah, we tell them about this. If anybody do not want to follow us, it's up to them, right? Nobody is forcing you and I to become Muslim or to submit ourselves to Allah completely, right? <clears throat> it's up to everybody, right, to, to, to take the right path. Okay? Any questions so far, brothers? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah khair for taking the time to join me <laughs> in this beautiful weather, right? I'm sweating. As I said, I couldn't, couldn't open the window because of um, the noise from the neighbors. A lot of music everywhere for the barbecues and subhanAllah, right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue, continue to guide all of us in the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us with taqwa and iman, accept all our deeds, forgive us for our shortcomings and our sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you and I among right, those whom Allah would choose to be in Jannatul Firdaus. Right, subhanahu wa ta'ala, shadu ala ila anta, wa sa'afruka wa atuhi wa'ala, subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil inzata ma'asifun, wa salamu ala al-mursalin, wa alhamdulillah ala min, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Right? Tomorrow, inshallah, we...